Good afternoon, Boston. Uh, my name is Dave Randall. Um, John convinced me that it's too warm in San Diego, so I decided to come out here and talk to you guys. So, uh, yeah, and at least you stayed, so that's a good thing. Um, so I'm going to do a bit of a reverse presentation as well because, um, you know, given the fact that we're at such an innovation hub here, I think it's most appropriate to kind of ask and inspire and see what can come out of these great minds to fuel us for the coming years. Uh, so that's the way I'm going to handle this. Um, at SolidWorks, uh, which is one of the brands within Dusso Systems, we build um, a really popular CAD package for doing mechanical CAD and industrial design. Um, I look at putting pieces uh, to our future puzzles together, uh, and those puzzles end up making these pictures or stories that we tell, and I typically focus on emerging tech and um, communities and that sort of stuff, so that's, that's my specialty. Um, today I'd like to talk a little bit about designing the future and how we can inspire the next generation of creation tools. Um, my background's industrial design, funny enough, and uh, it's a long story how I got into the software world, but um, I always come at things with design thinking, and I'll talk about that a little bit as well. And uh, I think it's really important to pay very close attention that the evolution of products as we interact with them is changing very rapidly. Um, you know, it's no longer about a static object that you place in an environment. It's environment dependent, there's instructions, there's multiple layers that come with these products, there's different ways people can interact with it, there's expectations for customization, and so on and so forth, right? The whole experience around a product is changing. I don't think the tools are evolving fast enough to take into account all the variables that the user expects. And so I hope to inspire maybe some things we can do, taking into account um, immersive design, to help build this next tool, whatever it may be, to help product designers come up with the right fit. Um, so we can't talk about any design tools without talking about design thinking. So this is a little slide um, uh, that was adapted from the Central Office of Design that, that kind of visualizes uh, design thinking. And what's important about design thinking is that, uh, you know, industri any industrial designers in here, by the way? Or no industrial designers? Okay, so as an industrial designer, we obsess about the squirrely part of this, uh, of this graphic, right? We obsess about it, and we try to fit every aspect of time allotted per project into that window, because that's the way you get most variables about a final product and get the most choice about what's going to bring the most innovation or be the best design. And so uh, anything we can do within our tools to create more time, essentially, or give yourself more options within that allotted time in that squirrely period is a really good thing. And so when I talk about design tools, we talk about tools that are going to allow somebody or allow a designer to do more in that allotted time, right? Come up with more variables, come up with more ideas, test it, get more user feedback, so on and so forth. Uh, and so, you know, this isn't all negative. I want to say that things are off to an awesome start, right? This is an example of a partner of ours called Gravity Sketch. Uh, this is a VR tool, uh, tablet as well, and it's kind of the first tool of its kind. It really allows users to get thoughts into a constructed item virtually in a really freeform way. Um, and it's kind of building as you think. And I know there's some constraints, but they've done a really good job making it somewhat you know, constraintless. So you can really get some interesting forms that you just can't communicate well on paper or can't communicate uh, on a board or in straight CAD. You know, it's like a, a hardcore CAD package. So they've found this nice way to create this balance between um, uh, you know, the, adva the advantage of a computer and having something recorded digitally, but also having that freeform set of thought. Uh, so we are off to an awesome start. but. The experience demand, which I was just talking about earlier, you know, these expectations about a product experience and building and training criteria and customizing objects, all of this experience around the future products requires 3D design to evolve. And, um, and that's what I hope to inspire here. You know, what can we do or what can you guys do or what can you know, the people downstairs do to create innovations to help the future designers design better, design more efficiently, and give you guys better product experiences? Uh, you know, it's worth noting that there's four, uh, you know, really interesting things happening right now in terms of technology. Uh, the first is, and this is a convergence, by the way, so all these four things are converging. That's why I use this graphic. Um, you know, contextual content is so relevant now, and that's what AR is all about. It's putting stuff into context. But people are more sensitive than ever to seeing their products in their environment, be it at home, in their office, in their car, how it fits on them, right? Everything is all about context because context is your place. We heard that, you know, we heard a lot about that today. 
Um, and so that means it's more meaningful to you. Uh, the other thing that's converging is the fact that everything's uh, becoming digitized. So we talk about the digital twin and uh, different apps that are available now for you to digitize content. Right? This is creating basically a 3D version of our world and everything in our world. And that's going to continue at a much more rapid pace. Um, generative. Uh, you know, we talk about app applying AI to design tools and getting suggestions for how something should look or how something should perform. Right? These are all technologies that are converging to help inspire design. You know, maybe ones that a designer can't even think about. You know, you can give something constraints and say, give me 20 options of what this thing's going to look like. Uh, and last but not least, products are now part of a layered ecosystem. Um, I don't know if any of you guys followed... Um, uh, Magic Leap, but when they came out at their conference just a few months ago, one of the big things they introduced beyond their headset was the what they're calling the multiverse. And uh, the multiverse talks about establishing a, a digital experience that transcends multiple layers of the both the real and virtual environment. And so products can be fully digital. They can be physical with a digital experience. They can be physical with a digital overlay. They can be just physical. And so we need to design now for all these different um, experiences as part of the layer. And so with all these things converging, um, you know, it leaves us to say, what can we do? And so uh, you know, these are examples of uh, kind of more, I guess, marketing-related content, because that's what I could find, because what I'm talking about hasn't been invented yet. But if you can imagine taking aspects of what you see here and bringing it into a design tool, um, things that would be powerful, and I'm going to say four of these, are things like overlay iterations. So being able to, as you're designing, see your product in context. So you saw that gravity sketch example where somebody was designing in a fully virtual space. Imagine doing that, but not in a virtual space, doing it in your real space. Right? What would a sculpture look like within the limitations of this table? Because that, as an artist, is what I've been given. Right? I haven't been given the room. I haven't been given a paper. I've been given this table or this space in a museum or whatever. So being able to translate your design live into an environment um, I think is hugely powerful. And if we can integrate that somehow into our tools, we're all for it. Uh, the next are environmental interactions. So um, it's kind of related, but this kind of plays off this idea that the whole world is be becoming digitized. Um, you know, so how can we make things interact with uh, a physical object that's been digitized? And how can uh, a designer make sh uh, uh, have a better chance at making sure that something fits really well or something looks appropriate in space? Um, that sort of thing. Uh, generative options. Uh, this is a video of a project that came out of this lab, actually. Uh, Neri Oxman, one of our uh, growing robots here. Uh, you know, as we start to think about generative design and the influence of generative design on our on our designs and tools, how can you visualize that generative design? Like, what if what if this was a um, uh, a beam within a factory, and I'm coming up with a um, some sort of support that I need here. Right? Instead of designing the support without any context of this actual beam, why can't I use tools to help me design that actually in that space? And use generative design, so just click on this and say, I want an arm that's two feet long, needs to support 40 pounds of weight, and give me a bunch of options on what's gonna satisfy that, that fits in exactly in this scenario. That's the type of thing I'm, I'm talking about here. Uh, and then last but not least, you know, how do we uh, account for these, this notion of layered experiences in a design tool? So how can you build in instructions to your, to your product because somebody expects to have that digital layer? Or how can you do something entirely digital? Um, this is a basic example of just a video that shows up when you point your, your, your phone on a specific part of the coffee maker. Um, but why can't this be designed in? That's like an afterthought. It's like, oh, shoot, we need to give somebody instructions how to use this. Let's put a sticker on here and give somebody an app and some instructions. But that's not really design. Um, so how, what can we do in terms of a tool to integrate all this? Uh, and so I think if we do these four things in the umbrella of kind of a single tool or a single utility, we can somehow really change the way design is approached as a tool. And, and not only are we chasing that dream within SolidWorks, I think others are as well, um, but I think that's what we need to deliver the next generation of experiences that our, our consumers want. Um, you know, we, we have a saying within our, our, our organization, which is if we, it's a statement we use before we embark on, on you know, interesting projects, you know. And so I'll leave you with this, saying if we, you know, let's create a future that fosters sustainable innovations capable of harmonizing product, nature, and life using, you know, our brand products, which are the 3D experience universes. And so that's kind of a request out to the people in this building, this world, the attendees, et cetera. To, to think at this level, you know, I think this is where we're going next. We heard a lot about what's done today or what people are starting to do with um, AR, VR, MR, 
Um, but uh, part of my responsibility is to think three, five, seven years out in terms of our product roadmap. And this is where we're thinking, you know, what's next? Cool. Thank you.